What is going on, everybody? Week 12 tight end, Stardom Sidham edition. Hope everybody's having a good week. Got some names for you here. A little bold one. Some bold, not some not so bold, but I have a feeling we're going to do a little bit of a name drop that everybody likes to hear. Oh, yeah. That's right. We're going to get into it. Uh, we'll get into it pretty quick here. We appreciate all you guys. Make sure you're hitting that like button. Yes. Commenting below also. Uh, Mac, who you got for your first uh, tight end of the week? Uh, well, since we're going to go, we had a name for you. I'm going to start out with Jack Monk. Doyle. Heck yeah. Way to start the show off. Yeah. Jack Doyle, um, of course, he was on by this past week and everything. And um, they're going against the Titans. They're typically not that great against uh, tight ends. And he's basically uh, Brissett's, I would say, his number one target. You know, T.Y. Hilton has been kind of up and down all season. But I think Jack Doyle is a great play this week. And I can see him scoring maybe twice. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's I like possible. Him. I mean, the way he was seeing targets before their bye week. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm actually going to go with my next guy being the same guy in that game mm-hmm. on the opposite side of the field. Mm-hmm. I'm going to go Delaney Walker All uh, right. as one of my starts for the week against Indianapolis. Another guy sees a ton of targets. Mm-hmm. You know, one of Mariota's favorite targets last week, six catches for 92 yards. Yeah. Uh, he's consistent right around that five to seven catch area. Mm-hmm. Uh, and... He's consistent. I yeah. mean, why, you know, sometimes you put in some of these big names and you're expecting big numbers. Sometimes it's fine just to put in the mediocre names and get the 10 points. That's true. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's true. I mean, by, by all means, Delaney Walker, great play, especially against especially against the Colts. Yeah, yeah. Tight ends seem to have a little bit of uh, success against the Colts. Yeah, a little vulnerable. So let's go, let's go multi-tight end in this game, huh? Might as well. Walker and Doyle. Yeah. All right. Um, I, another start I like. And he's becoming a weekly start right now uh, just because of the fact that uh, Reed cannot stay healthy. And, again, you just kind of, you know, keep your eyes on uh, the reports and everything this week. And if Jordan Reed plays, then, of course, you don't uh, play Vernon. But Vernon Davis against the Giants is a good play. He's been very consistent. Um, Kurt, you know, he loves to throw to him. You know, he, he, he's a reliable target. And the Giants have, you know, picked up their pace defensive wise, but again, they're still kind of suspect, you know, against the uh, tight end. So Vernon Davis is a good play this week. Yeah, I like Vernon Davis. Uh, this one's a little bold. Uh, somebody that we talked about in numerous shows before, OJ Howard. Mm-hmm. Now the jury is still out on OJ Howard about what his actual workload is. Mm-hmm. But Brait's obviously not involved. Mm-hmm. That's obvious. Yeah. Brait's kind of an afterthought. O.J. Howard is getting more and more offensive plays, and he's doing stuff with him. He only had three catches for 52 yards but had the touchdown. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's a big play type of guy, and they have a certain package built in for him to where he's able to get open, and they're using him more as a receiver than a tight end. Yeah. O.J. Howard's a sneaky play this week. They're going to be at Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm looking for O.J. Howard to have about the same game he had last week, about 50 yards and a touchdown. Yeah. And if you can get that out of O.J. Howard – you're doing cartwheels up and down the, you know, up and down the street. But OJ Howard is he's a stud tight end. Yeah. He's got <laughs> Once he gets the full workload, yeah. The dude will be a legit top ten, twelve tight end going forward. Yeah. Yeah. Plenty of talent. Um I like uh Tyler Croft, you know, going against the Browns, you know, he's pretty much a guy that you can count on to get the same amount of targets almost um Gosh, I mean, AJ Green is, 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 you know, he's doing well, but Tyler Croft has, you know, been the more consistent back, uh, excuse me, tight end or, uh, offensive weapon, I should say. Mixon, he hasn't been that great. The whole running game in general, man, it's just, so they've been relying more on the passing game and Croft. Sometimes you might see a little Brandon LaFell, you know, sprinkled in there, but, Tyler Croft has been very consistent. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, the Browns are the same situation. They are definitely not great against a tight end. Yep, so. absolutely. Uh, one guy I want to talk about here for a minute, and I can't quite say yet if he's a start or a sit, but mm-hmm. it's Greg Olson supposed to come back this week. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure we're going to hear tons of questions about Greg Olson. Mm-hmm. If I got him, I've held on to him for this long, should I start him? Yeah. Um, can you start him? We need to monitor practices a little bit more to make sure yeah. he's, he's technically still on IR. Right. If he comes off IR and he does play, mm-hmm. can you start him? Yes. Mm-hmm. He's probably going to be limited, though. If this was an upper body injury or something, 
I could see him getting more workload, but it's a foot injury he's coming off of. Yeah. They're not going to want to just throw him out there and give him 50 offensive plays right off the bat. That's true. So you need to temper the expectations with Greg Olson. If you got him, you can start him and hope for that mm-hmm. short touchdown. Mm-hmm. If you got better options, though, you've held on to him for this long. Mm-hmm. Give him one week to get back into it, and then you can deploy him starting next week, week 13, against New Orleans. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Um, I want to kind of get into some of the sits that I have. Um, the main one right now is Hunter Henry. And the main reason is because, I don't know, it just seems like he's not been involved in offense like we thought coming into the season. You know, a lot of people drafted him pretty high, uh, four tight ends, I, I would say. And there's a lot of expectation for him. But it's just not he's not being used um, like he should be. Keenan Allen, wow, he, you know, the past week he just seemed like the Keenan of old. Um and they've got so many different weapons, you know, um, Eckler. Um, Gordon is still going to keep doing his thing. So, Hunter Henry is just not – if you don't have any other options, yeah, you could you could play him. But right now, he's just not um, used enough in that offense to even be effective. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I'd sit him this week against the Cowboys. All right. What, what about coming off of a bye week? Somebody probably forgot about ASJ. That's don't true. forget about ASJ. That's true. ASJ is a, you know, a target monster for – Mm-hmm. The Jets, big yeah. red zone target, going to be playing against those Carolina Panthers. Yeah, um, not going to go out and blow the doors off and get you a hundred yards, but mm-hmm. that type of a red zone threat. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'd be looking at ASJ this week. Last time they played, Week Ten, six catches for sixty-seven yards, mm-hmm. and that's pretty consistent for what he does. Yeah, I mean, it is what it is. He's not going to be one of those top tier tight ends, but right. he's another one of those solid plays. You know, if you got some of these guys that we're not too high on, ASJ is a great. Mm-hmm. Plug and play option. He's going to get you that seven to ten fantasy points a week. Yeah, yeah. Um, one of my last guys, man. I I don't. You know, he, he we've talked about him week after week, and he's you know been a producer fantasy wise. But this week, Evan Ingram is kind of. I'm I'm a little leery about it. Ingram got the sits this week. He's got the sits, and reason being is just you know they're so depleted. You know, uh, in that offense, you know, for the Giants and the Redskins, man, they, gosh, they're starting to play well. Um, they're going to be at home. Kirk Cousins is looking great. And then the defense is, you know, they're serviceable, man. And, but they play exceptionally well at home and they're going to be locked in on Evan. You know, they don't have any other options. If, if Sterling is still out, especially. I would definitely not start Evan Ingram because they don't have nobody else to throw it to. No, nobody else. And they're going to be locked in on him. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Uh, last guy for that I have, and this is going to be kind of dependent on Smoke and Jay Cutler's health status. <laughs> yeah. Okay, if Smoke and Jay comes back out and is no longer concussed and is starting, mm-hmm. um, sneaky play of the week is going to be Julius Thomas. They're going to be playing at New England. They're going to have to be throwing to stay in the game. Mm-hmm. Over the past few weeks, Julius Thomas is – Turned into one of the top targets for Jay Cutler. Yeah. Uh, red zone threat again. Uh, I mean, he only had four catches for 30 yards, but that was pretty much with Matt Moore. Mm-hmm. Uh, you look at the games prior to that, two weeks prior, had a touchdown in each of them. Mm-hmm. Um, we've talked about it in the preseason. When we first started, you know, week one, that Cutler used to lock in on Greg Olson when they were in Chicago. Right. Same type of deal here. It's just taking a little bit of time to get going. Yeah. And slowly but surely, Julius Thomas is turning into that target that Greg Olson was in Chicago back in the days. Mm-hmm. And he's going to start reaping the benefits if Cutler is healthy. Yeah. If yeah. Cutler does not play in this game, do not start Julius Thomas. No. I mean, by <laughs> no means start Julius Thomas with Matt Moore. No, no, no. Matt but Moore but is... but if Cutler does play, and they're playing at New England. Mm-hmm. Now another thing to take in consideration too is if it's snowy or whatever yeah. the weather is. And I think it goes for any of these outdoor stadiums. Mm-hmm. Watch the weather. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you exactly. know, just watch it. Keep an eye on it because you don't want to put your guy out there in the middle of a blizzard. Yeah. When some yes. dude's on the West Coast playing in seventy degrees and sunny that you could have started. <laughs> yeah. That's you know, just limit gonna... the limit the chances for problems. Yeah. yeah. So well, that was that was rapid fire. Rapid fire, I mean, baby. We're, we're bringing it to you quick today. Mm-hmm. So that, that's your start sits for the week, week 12 for tight ends. Yeah. If we didn't cover your guy, make sure you comment below. If Please. you like the speed it up faster rapid fire version, let yeah. us know below. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you want the, the more in depth, slow, methodical, mm-hmm. com- comedical, com- comical. Comical. That's, that's what it, I was looking for. It. If you want one of those, just let us know. Hit it below. Uh, yeah. We're always trying to find ways to improve. Just so make sure you let us know. Exactly. Uh, you know, find us on uh, Facebook, follow us on Twitter. 
got questions, hit us up with it. We'd be more than happy to uh, to answer it for you and get you guys on your way. Yes, indeed. Cool. You guys have a good rest of your week. Thanks. Bye. Peace.